Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should start uh, saying something uh, different in the beginning of these videos. But, but in any case, hello, boys and girls. Um, this uh, video today is called "In Defense of Generalized Hypergeometric Functions," and uh, I say "in defense of" because I think most people uh, are not really warm with generalized hypergeometric functions. Uh, maybe you know the situation, you have some differential equation that you want to solve and you try everything you can but you, you, know, you don't get there, it doesn't seem to be easy and then you type it into an, um, uh, some solver like Mathematica uh, or Maple or something like that and then it spits out uh, some, uh, some long series of terms and it involves these kind of uh, ugly uh, functions, right? The, you know, the, um, some Gaussian uh, hyper so and so and then you, you might, if you don't know it, you might quickly look it up on Wikipedia and you see, oh, there's some, you know, some big object and uh, it's not, it, it, people feel like it's not even a real function because, you know, it's not ex, uh, exp or uh, uh, sine or some polynomial. Um, but uh, really, I uh, actually like generalized hypergeometric functions and all its special cases. Um, and in this video, I want to get people a little bit warm with that. So here is uh, one way of writing it down. I hope I didn't, uh, you know, uh, fuck up some uh, some uh, terms and uh, factors. But it doesn't really matter. In in, in broad general terms, it's this sort of expression. It's a series like the exponential function z to the power of n divided by n factorial but then there are uh, coefficients which are uh, admittedly pretty complicated so these are um, it's, a, it's a big product right so we introduce uh, inside of this uh, of this um, coefficient where the outer series goes over n we introduce a product or another index m and so these are going to be uh, in total n terms so you know the, the, the first coefficient um, that uh, will just be one then uh, we have just one term the two terms three terms that are multiplied of this form together so th this object actually as n goes to infinity becomes bigger and bigger it's more and more um, things that are multiplied together and the things that are multiplied together are also a fraction of more products and so really this uh, generalized hypergeometric uh, function f p q where p and q are some integers takes three arguments on the one hand the, the set which is any complex number and then two arrays of uh, numbers so these are these are basically this is one argument this is another argument which is a, a, a kind of vector or a, this is an array you know a, a finite sequence which has q um, elements and then another sequence which, had, which has p so you know as you see there's a broad range of, of uh, functions that you can uh, get with this kind of expression and what you do here is you multiply all of them together but not just these numbers but you actually add uh, m in sequence where m runs from 0 to n minus 1 so this, I was just describing this you know it's not important that you um, kind of have a, a, a feeling of what this uh, implies at the moment but you will see that uh, immediately um, and uh, so this uh, object pops up as, as a solution of many differential equations because there is some very general differential equation which kind of looks like that. You have uh, two um, differential operators which uh, are a product of the differential uh, operators. So this is basically the db on this side would be um, q uh, like the the cube derivative and then some lower derivatives of uh, f and on the other side more um, derivatives and in, in, in this 
kind of big differential operators, they also have these uh, coefficients, right? That's where they come from. Um, and then on the left side is one more derivative than on the other side. So, so basically, whenever you have a, a differential equation of this form, which is a pretty br broad one, because there are these uh, sequences of, of numbers, then turns out that this expression is a solution. Okay, and now I, I want to motivate why that thing looks like the object it does and uh, why you shouldn't be scared of it. I actually kind of see the beauty in it. Um, one thing to point out is that, you know, uh, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, when you have a polynomial, you can factorize it into simple expressions. So if it's a polynomial of, let's say, uh, third order, then you can write it as a product um, of differences that are uh, some coefficient minus the, the variable that the, the polynomial is in. So um, this, this point is just saying, you know, uh, I don't want to make an extra uh, whiteboard for that, but basically you can write polynomials as products and if you play with the plus and minus signs, um, then you can also write this theorem uh, in a way that says you know every polynomial in X can be written as uh, um, some product of objects which are some numbers which are the, the zeros of the polynomial plus X. Okay, <laughs> that, that's just as a, a comment. And now let's get to a first example where I have, have a uh, geometric function, I get general S1 pops up. Okay, so what we are going to do here is we're going to solve a very simple differential equation. Uh, the differential equation is that we have an unknown function x. Uh, okay, so what we are going to do now is we're going to solve a very simple differential equation with um, rather basic known approach. The differential equation that we are going to look at is the derivative of f uh, uh, should be f itself and we have the initial condition that at x equals 0 the function should be 1. Right? Um, then we make this uh, ansatz that we say well look at, let's look at functions which can be written down as series right? where we can do a series expansion. So we assume uh, well, that f is a sum of uh, powers of x with some coefficients, uh, c0, c1, c2, and so on. Um, if x equals 1, then all these expressions, x to the power of n, with n uh, bigger than 0, they would vanish. So we know that uh, c0 must be 1, that's a condition, so we've got that worked in. And we don't know what the coefficients of the series expansion are. But uh, if we take the derivative, then we, you know, the derivative of this expression, if it goes linearly into all of the, the terms, the one falls, uh, falls away, x becomes 1, x squared becomes 2x, uh, x cubed becomes uh, x squared. So we know what the derivative must look like in terms of these coefficients. And now, given the equality of these two functions by the equation we want to solve, we can say, well, okay, c1 has to be 1, and we also see, okay, c2 has to be, you know, c2 times 2 is c1, which means c2 has to be half of the value of c1, which would be 1 half. And similarly, c3 has to be c2 divided by 3. So c3 would be c2 divided by 3, which is um, c1 divided by 6, which is uh, 1 6, and so on and so forth. And in this way, we get a recursion rela recursive relation, and we know now, okay, whatever um, we start with, you know, we, we know c0 from uh, the condition, and we know if we know 1 c, then we know what the next c is because the ratio, as we can see here, is always given by 1 over n plus 1, right? So for example, uh, if you plug in n equals 2, then you have the, the ratio of c3 to, to c2 
will be one third, like this, this equation here, right? And so this means that now we can unravel that and we see Cn is, Cn, you know, is uh, Cn minus one, which is some number times Cn minus two and so on and so on. And since we, when we unraveled it, we, we get this, this uh, product here that we saw before, right? So, uh, as we saw here, um, we got one sixth because that's the product of one third times one half. Uh, in general, the uh, coefficient is given as a product over this expression. And uh, in this case, c0 happens to be one. This expression happens to be one uh, over n factorial. And thus, you know, we've now now all cn's. We have solved the problem. You know how to express f as a series, and that happens to be the exponential function, which is the solution of this equation, right? Um, and the crucial thing to see is here. So we constructed the um, the solution as this product, right? I mean, we, we can also write this uh, on the outside. We can say this is the product of our, um, okay. This was the wrong index, but so be it. Zero and minus one, right? Um, and the thing is that this object is really just this object. I've just plugged it in. And what the generalized hypergeometric function is, is to take this, this idea um, that we want to solve differential equations. I mean, that's one way of getting at it. But we are not going to look at this problem in particular with the n plus 1. But we are just going to assume that this um, kind of relation between the coefficients is given uh, in terms of some um, polynomial functions, right? So here is some polynomial function, let's call it uh, g of n and here is another one, let's call it h of n. So we would make the serious ansatz, we would see some relation between the coefficients and they, they would be pretty general, it would be a quotient of some polynomials in the natural number, the counting number. And th uh, then you know, we could say, okay, um, we, we don't look at the most general uh, a priori, we don't look at the most general uh, polynomials here, but we, we look at those that can be written as a product of, um, you know, n uh, minus uh, some coefficients, with, with, uh, which where the coefficients are, for the sake of it here, um, some integers, let's say, right? Um, and we still get a big class out of um, differential equations. We can we 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 get this way. Right? I mean, we made the assumption that the function can be expanded as a series, and we we assume that, that we can find some relation. But uh, with this technique, we can recursively compute uh, uh, one solution, right? And if you're on a computer, uh, then you cannot uh, compute I don't know value values for the exponential function to, to um, infinite precision in, in any case. So this, uh, this recursive relation of uh, knowing okay, all the coefficients I can compute by just multiplying some numbers, this is a pretty broad class of differential equations you can solve this way. And this is also how the algebra systems uh, solve this basically. Did you, did you recognize or you typed in some, uh, some structure of these differential equations and then there's this correspondence between a particular kind of differential equation and series with uh, this expansion where the coefficients are given like that. Okay, and so finally I want to show you uh, s how some functions that you already know of come about because the generalized hypergeometric function covers a, a, a huge range of, of functions. So if you can uh, name a function by a name then probably uh, there is some sequence uh, as arguments to, to the generalized hypergeometric function where the function just pops out of it. Um, so we have seen that if you know if you say I want to look at a 
one sequence element, let's say call it A1 equals 1, then out of this kind of product of which there are um, two in the coefficient and there's a product over these kind of products in, the, in this expression, then just from that you get the factorial uh, function in n and here you see that if you were to, to take just two numbers and you look at just one of these ratios um, of which you can have arbitrary many in, the, in each uh, uh, coefficient um, then this is uh, the, just the factorial that we saw this is the factorial which, which starts um, with one extra so it gets a little bit further and then here most of the stuff cancels out and you just get the um, 1 over any integer that you want right and so since you can build take these building blocks and and uh, you know multiply them together you can get uh, neat uh, sequences of of rationals um, and here you see for example um, the the normal hypergeometric function, uh, which is defined as a special case where the first sequence has two elements and the second one has one element, right? Because here we had this uh, arbitrary long sequence, here we specialized with two elements, then we had another arbitrary long sequence, here we specialized with one element, uh, plug in sequence 1, 1, and here the very short sequence of 2. Then uh, all these things apply, and we're left with an all series over this expression. And then, if you pull out uh, the axis uh, a little bit and play around, then you can you can isolate here uh, a series expansion that you might recognize as the logarithm, and thus you get a relation between the logarithm function and, and this expression. So turns out the logarithm of one minus x is minus x times uh, this uh, hypergeometric function. And then you, you know, if you want it, you can recast, you can say, well, substitute u for 1 minus x, and then you would have an expression for the, just the logarithm um, as a complex value function as this series where you have the hypergeometric function. And here are some more expressions, you know, I just copy pasted them uh, from, from Wikipedia. Um, one, uh, one function would be, for example, the D logarithm, which is an interesting function in analysis, um, where you take a sequence of three and a sequence of two elements, and if they look like that, then this function pops out. Or more generally, here um, also an example of just a hypergeometric function, where the first um, element would be any number, and if you plug this in, then you get a, a sequence which actually sums to 1 over 1 minus x to any number that you want. So all these kind of expressions, they can all express this hypergeometric functions. And here a little bit more uh, intricate one where if you plug in um, not natural numbers, but some rationals, right, then the, the, uh, the uh, products will look a little bit more uglier because then you have uh, all kinds of uh, rational numbers multiplied together and you get some, some polynomial with uh, rational number coefficients and if you do that in that case then what pops out is the inverse function to the sine function for example. Okay so uh, I hope that was interesting and uh, you got a little bit friendly with the generalized hypergeometric function and, and see, see why I think they are actually kind of rational objects and, and somewhat natural to define. And yeah that's it for today. Um, subscribe to the channel I think I should say that, say that more often like all the YouTubers do um, and leave comments uh, what kind of direction I should drift with these kind of videos.